Hello and thank you for joining us on the Monday edition of Journalist Hangout. I'm Ayodili Uzubahun. Today on the program, joyous parents receive Greenfield University students after 38 days in the den of kidnappers as bandits abduct more than 200 students in fresh Niger attack and rustle 150 cattle. Violence escalates in Imo and other southeast states as terrified citizens stay indoors and later on the show, Big turnout of voters in Lagos APC primaries as violence, diversion of materials, ma exercise in some areas. I'll be hanging out with Babaji De Koladi Utitoju and Gani Kaede Balogun. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Thank you for staying with us. After more than a month in the den of kidnappers, the abducted students of the Greenfield University, Kaduna, regained their freedom thanks to their parents who paid hefty prizes in form of millions of naira and motorcycles before they were released. Hence, they betrayed emotions and frustration while receiving the released students in Kaduna. Let's share the, that moment with you. Say it again, please, sir. Like, 180 million. Record, that is what they collected record. from us. From we parents. Tell it. Without the help of a government, we none of the government officials that have we come to our aid since we the 20, 20th of we April, they took these children. None of, no single one policeman that the government yes. have released to go yes. after them. God has done it for us. 40 days is not 40 days. At all, at all. 40 days is not a symbolic, symbolic number. Yes, yes. Congratulations. God has done it for us. Congratulations, sir. Congratulations. 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 Ah, you can see. Congratulations. Congratulations. released abducted students of Greenfield University, Kaduna. Meanwhile, we hear often that lightning does not strike more than once at a spot, but rising insecurity in Niger and some states is defined that another set of students numbering more than 200 were kidnapped at an Islamia school in Tegina on Sunday after the Kangara debacle. In February, the latest abduction sent jitters down the spines of most travelers who wisely parked their vehicles along the Tegina Mena Road as the bandits crossed the road with stolen cattle. Let's hear that with you too. You see? Yes. All packed. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. You can see? 
Yes. Yes. I'm making a movie. Yes. I'm making a movie. Yes. 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 Eh? Not okay. See them? Oh, they are packed. This is the Kuta Contegora local government transport vehicles. Mm, as you can see, they have blocked the road leading to Tegina, Tegina to Mina. Yes, you can see trucks are all packed. Mm? A leeway, all packed. You can see they were shooting terrible, terribly, crossing with their cattle. These are all vehicles that are packed. These are all vehicles that are packed. Mm -hmm. You can see as I'm standing, I'm heading towards the the military personnel. I'm approaching the the the, the Mopol truck. Uh, the Mopol. Hmm? Them? Oh, these are passengers. Hmm? These are all passengers standing. From this position, from this position, I was hearing I was hearing serious gunshots. Hmm? From this position. We were hearing serious gunshots while they were crossing with their cattles. Hmm? Hmm? You can see, these are all prison road blocked. Hmm? Yes, these are, they are passengers. Hmm? That's um. Tagina. Um, but Baba Jine, let me let's first of all talk about the released student of Greenfield University, Kaduna, mm -hmm. and the parents. They could not because if this is not what we've seen in the video, we would have doubted that story. The parents yes. actually went ahead to to state that they negotiated the release of their children and they paid. Yes, that's what happened. Um, we all know why this has continued to happen. It's because clearly there is no discernible strategy in place. There is no clear plan on the part of government to put an end to this nonsense. People will pay ransom. They do not have a choice. The, the bandits first collected 95 million from them only to come back and tell them that the leadership has changed hmm. and that hmm. they needed to pay more. Something you don't have control over. Yeah, they needed to pay more. And you must buy, buy uh, motorcycles as well. So, you know, within the group, there could be a misunderstanding and somebody could shoot. Uh, somebody and he, he assumes the leadership of the group. That's how these groups, Boko Haram and Bandits, that's how they operate. So they told them that the leadership has changed, that they must now pay um, more. Nobody that's can. how they continued to take money from them. There is a particular parent who sold his house and now is waiting, the person who bought the house is waiting to take possession of the house. It's now the mercy of people to be able to get another accommodation. It's just similar to an, an incident in Ondo State, where bandits demanded for 15 million. The man sold his house for 16 million, gave 15 million to bandits. Hmm. He kept the 1 million. 
just so he could secure an accommodation and move his things. It, that is how bad it is in our country now. Everything that that both parents had worked for, the Greenfield parent, everything that he had labored for all his life, he sold just to secure the freedom of his daughter. That's all and then, Ondo, that one sold his house to be able to pay 15 million ransom to bandits and then kept the remaining 1 million for accommodation. So the Greenfield parent is waiting now. To, to so the person who bought the house is waiting to take possession. So where government is unable to solve this kind of problem, children are a massive treasure. There are people who give everything that they have to have a child. That's a very good school. To have a child. You understand? Mm -hmm. So who is that person who will sit back? Is the daughter has been kidnapped and he will not do anything about it. I've not seen that person. Mm -mm. So if you like threatening them with death, mm. if they pay ransom... They said they were going to the bush to... They are bushes. going to spit in your face. They will spit in your face yes. and pay ransom yes. to get their children out. Yes. There's a senator who is apparently... He, he does not know what kind of laws to, 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 to initiate. He's come up with a bill now. That, that makes it an offense uh, yes, to, to pay ransom. criminalize pay ransom. I can tell you that if any member of his home state, of his household, gets kidnapped, he will be the first to go and pay ransom. Well, Yet he's thinking of a law. Yes, you can if you cannot secure the, the people, children abroad, if you cannot secure, when, when, if they come home and they get kidnapped near the airport, what happens? Mm -hmm. Because it, the, I, I see no insensitive. I don't know. I don't know. The other one came, the other they said they should jail people who are using generators. I mm. said, ah, do you know what you are doing at all? Was that why, why they <laughs> elected you? you there. <laughs> to come up with ridiculous laws? No, we should, be, we should be better than this. We should protect people. Ensure that people don't, don't sell all that they have made in their lives just to secure freedom from bandits. Mm. Is, is that bad in our country Tell now? You. GKB, when the primary responsibility of any government is the protection of life and properties, and it will now behove on me to try and retrieve my child back after suffering from uh, these bandits, and you have to sell everything just to get it. And the state government is not talking. The federal government went the other day to tell us that, look, it's the state affair. That uh, somebody said uh, the federal government is not is not in the purview of the federal government to deal with kidnapping and what have you. Uh, I'm sure you know why the parents are shouting in that video. There are some government officials wanted to take the children to the governor for uh, for photo opportunities. I, I, I saw a I governor saw that, that has that ignored the resistance. And this thing did not happen. You now want to? I'm sure the governor did not send them. That mm. government, I know, I know, is not interested in taking pictures. If somebody somewhere mm. who will think in his mind that the best way to express the glory mm. is to take these people, my fact is lucky. This is not mushy people. Oh, 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 yes, now. Or suddenly, you will have gone back with a No, you will have gone back with a broom. The guy who will have been lucky. After paying for ransom, negotiating the ransom, will be, one will of be, the parents yeah. said he went to the bush to negotiate himself. Seriously, because this is, we've been losing the main purpose of governors. For the last 30 years or so. First, of course, with the lack of electricity, now you have to provide your own water, you provide your own road. Now we have to provide security for our own children and their parents for something that is clearly the only job of government security of life support. The, the only legitimacy that you have to be in government is to secure our lives and property. This is a bitter sweet thing. It's bitter because it's obvious that the government has lost control of that particular narrative. It is sweet because people are now waking up to the reality that they can no longer rely on government to solve their problems. You know, the, the next phase of this is, this uh, with Tegina, 200. Now these I, people I don't know. I don't know um, how many kids were indeed kidnapped. They say numbering more than 200, according to this report. Yeah, two. We, Sometimes we just uh, prefer to stay safe um, because I have people that I talk to 
and diary and that's not what I've been told. So sometimes it's just safe to say so many people. In fact, I would prefer to say dozens of children until it is confirmed. Remember the back and forth over the, uh, the Kankara so mm. then before figures. we eventually got the real the real figure so, uh, but you know uh, when you get that figure the other mm, time mm, you know that when even the, when they say 200 it's not new that <laughs> we've had no, it's not over new. 200 it's, to the, the, the thing is mm -hmm. it's not but it's safe. not the exact we know no, we know what you're talking about they've, 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 they've kidnapped about 276 ah, students ah. before in this country so it's not that it cannot happen just say, <laughs> okay. nobody yeah. knows yeah. Exactly. Yeah. it could even be more ah, ah. nobody is certain about how the many accurate uh -huh, figure yes. by now and then what we are poor too that they also we don't know how many who less, counted this oh, yes yeah. now but the truth is that whole area that tegina where we used to enjoy traveling and there, there is a very uh, good restaurant in that town where motorists will park mm -hmm. motorists coming to lagos or going uh, or going to the north kano kaduna that was a major restaurant where everybody will park run by yoruba man really and then we will eat fantastic meal you eat fantastic meal, you go back. That was when traveling was fun. Traveling is no longer fun, as even you have <laughs> discovered. Mm -hmm. Now, these guys, two days of terror in that area. They came, rustled cattle, attacked people. The, the, this is still the road. Uh, yeah. Now, mm -hmm. the vigilantes stood up to them on Saturday collected the cattle that they had rustled from them and took the cattle to keep at uh, uh, the police station there. Those was a boat, the brief. Those boys came back, hmm. sacked the police station, them. took the cattle away, and then to worsen things, kidnapped children as well. They went to a, a, a police, there is a filling station near the Tegina Junction. Anybody familiar with that area, a frequent traveler, would know that filling station. They went there, filled the tanks of their 25 motorbikes uh, for, without paying a dime, and then left the area. This is the Bandi Sea, um, um, what was it called? They see Niger State as their home. Hmm. It's not uh, so many local governments now. Bandits are running riots. Muya, Rafi, Shiroro. Now even Contagora, the Contagora area. They are Wushishi. They are now in all of those areas. Is is it, one may be right to say that about a quarter of Niger State is in the hands of bandits. That's the and, way it is now. And to put it in perspective, Niger is bigger. Than the entire southeast in size. So we cut off the that. biggest the largest state in Nigeria, state in Nigeria by land. So mass. It's, it's bigger than the southwest minus Lagos. Mm. So you cut off that, imagine we'll be putting Ogun and Onuru together. That's the size that they are controlling. I, I, don't, I don't know how to help this narrative, but this is just the stark reality of what is happening in Nigeria. And we can't stop talking about it. No, it's and just it's impossible. Some people would think that the no, journalist dies in you. The moment you see the truth and you refuse to talk about yeah. it, then you are not worthy of your name. When you see the truth, because the truth shall set you free. It's not just the Bible that prescribes that we speak the truth. All the major books written by the greatest philosophers, some of them did not even believe in Islam or Christianity. They preached speaking the truth. Because if 200 so children we can't, were abducted or... We Who's have problems that? that government must address. We are not the issue. You know? Cyber bandits who sit on social media to mm. harass people, that is their problem. But as long as we are here, mm. we will talk about this problem. The day you solve the problem, we will button up our mouths. It's as simple as it's that. It's becoming embarrassing. People are like refugees. You can see they are moving. These, they are, move videos. these are videos. These are videos. They have to they park can't. their vehicles. Look at road citizens. People can't rest. Look at people running. One, they had gunshots. That was why they were running. They had gunshots. In fact, a friend of mine, uh, uh, Doctor Saleh, was telling me that you people were reporting that uh, uh, bandits took over some com uh, communities in Sokoto State. They were killing people in Rabah. That's the home hometown 
of uh, the uh, Sultan so Amadou mm. Bello is now a, a home of bandits. He said, the people there talk about bandits like they are already part of them. They see them every day. They move around on market day. They come out, do what they like and go. So is the bandits are behaving now in northern Nigeria like they have come to stay. Hmm. And when you have a problem and you fail to address the problem squarely, if you are not careful, it become it, it, it will become turn to fester and it becomes a national problem. Hmm. All right, we'll take this breather. When we come back, we'll talk more. It's still journalist hangout. Please stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. It's your favorite news and current affairs program, Journalist Standout. I still have Babajide Koladi Otitoju in house and Gani Kairi Balogo with me in the studio. And moving on now, it appears we left our ports in the southeast unattended and goods are now having a field day. After a rise in violence and killing in some states like Imo in the zone, hoodlums are taking over the streets as such terrified by what could be brewing across the zone. Residents of most cities in Enugu, Anambra, stayed indoors following a sit-at-home threat. Markets, banks, motor parks, and other public places, including schools and government offices, were locked. I saw that visuals earlier today. Babajide and um, our correspondents from across the southeast, mm. they've been reporting and they've been providing video and everything. And today is the Remembrance Day that um, these people are talking about, but it's a total compliance across all the states in the Southeast from what I've gotten earlier today. And one thing came to my mind, I, I had to call you, that if they could comply to this kind of while the government, the governors were telling them as at Saturday, Sunday, everybody come out, go about your businesses. But the compliance was almost total. That yes. means there's a problem somewhere. Well, it's not just a problem, so many problems that we are grappling with. It shows that those governors have become irrelevant in the hearts of the people. I mean, if you are a governor that people love, and you won the election hands down. You understand? Because an election is, is, is like a referendum. A referendum yes. mm. And your people supported and you. And your people overwhelmingly supported you as the pattern of voting in most of those states usually suggests. Then we shouldn't be having a situation in which a young man will simply give an instruction you give a counter instruction and nobody will be. So there are issues. It shows that the governors are no longer popular or that the people have simply they've lost hope. They've lost they've lost that like those governors have lost their mojo. Mm -hmm. Their um, power to mm -hmm. arrest the consciousness of their people gone because if you are a popular governor if you are popularly elected and the people still love you if they simply don't see you as somebody um, serving his own interest in government house when you come out people will come out people should you. respond that's the mm. way it should be mm. that's the way it should be they should be worried about about this because their legitimacy is being threatened. Does if they tell them on election day not to come out like this, would they not complain? Look, look at I it. hope. I hope that it we can get to solve. That. Yes, I hope we can solve the problem before in the southeast before it degenerates further. Mm -hmm. Because as we've said repeatedly, assassination of people, mm -hmm. um, attack on government buildings, um, security um, and. And security, mm, infrastructure, security that, this was how Boko Haram started. Very and it wasn't a long time uh, ago. Now we are seeing the same pattern. So we should really be worried. You, you know that uh, on Saturday, 
in Anambra, five soldiers were gone down. Hmm. The immigration headquarters in Abia State was also attacked and officers were killed. That was the same day that in Imo, uh, Ahmed Gulak, hmm. former political advisor, advisor to, to Jonathan. Ulo Jonathan, was killed hmm. uh, while on his way to, to, uh, to the airport. Hmm. So, the chief are really justice, the chief, hmm? the chief judge, uh, former uh, retired judge, retired judge, uh, retired judge, uh, retired judge in broad daylight. Yes, the broad video daylight. is trending. You know, he brought him out of uh, his own vehicle. vehicle. They double crossed him, shot him, brought him out of his vehicle, and then fired shot the old him. man. So things are really going back bad in the south. And my feeling is that if we had moved quickly before things degenerated. It would not have been this bad. You saw that when um, <coughs> when uh, the governor of Ebony mm. was announcing uh, the setting up of um, uh, Ebubiagu, you know I was saying it here that I hope this is not too late mm. because you watched, you kept your eyes off the ball. Things were degenerating. You didn't think that you should set up a security outfit. Now that these guys have assumed you have taken uh, over the streets. Uh, some, some. Broad daylight, uh, you see them thing. with AK-47. There they was one that I saw. I saw a video. The guy was not wearing anything, but he had this gun and a um, red piece of cloth, and he was saying that if uh, they burn you, uh, come out. Let us see. And he had this AK-47. Wow. You know, without wearing not even uh, uh, a pair of shorts, no pants, just walking on the streets. So anarchy, we are seeing anarchy. Before our eyes, we are seeing anarchy. Mm -hmm. And there is a need to move and address this problem before it degenerates. Because if we are facing what we are facing in Bono State, and Yobe, and sometimes to Adama, they still attack those places. And in the East, we are facing something similar. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, how we, can, we, we, we can deal with this situation. Because we've not dealt with At what all. we have in Bono State. Mm -hmm. We are both around, we go and attack uh, an army base, take away weapons, only for us to announce that we repair the attack. Mm -hmm. No, we are not. We, we, we are, we are, we are, there's we are there's this term they use for them in the media, unknown government. Unknown government, yeah. I, I, okay, I saw one interview earlier today, one of the guys that were apprehended and everything. But the problem there now is that, look, not even, people are not speaking up because this, at the end of the day, it will be counterproductive for that region. Now, we were talking about Borno states yesterday. Or How the, many or years? The, or the northeast. Yes, the northeast. North. How many years it will take that region to, to recover? To recover. And today now, was and talking now about the, 40 and now years. The and Do you understand? In Niger now, the in beginning North of this thing, if this guy starts this operation, and even the elders and the leaders are not coming together to say, we have to do something about it and sit down, you know, to call for dialogue. I think the backlash will be on everybody. Everybody. Mm, my people have been saying that if your neighbor is eating rotten locusts, I do not caution him. The smell will not let you sleep. I think my uh, neighbors are already eating the locusts anyway, so we have to get ready for the smell. Uh, somebody once said that insanity is defined as doing the same thing and expecting a different result. We are all students of history, and what is happening in the Southeast is not different from what happened in the Northeast, from what is happening now in the North and Central. Government has lost the narrative. I'm talking about, when I say government, I'm talking about everybody. Forming the, as the next one called government, including state governors and federal security forces. In the last one month alone, I read a report where somebody said nothing less for 300 personnel of security forces have been killed in the Southeast. With the entire number of the Nigerian police is less than 300,000. You are talking about almost 10% of the Every people. Every day we hear stories. And it's no longer news. That's what is even more. Police station, the people no longer command, consider the and news. And that they sack police stations and they kill military personnel is no longer news. That's how immune we have become to simple humanity. Killing soldiers. That we need to do. It used uh, to be a very tough thing then when you hear that. Ah. I don't like repeating myself because we've said it before. Remember, Gideon said when they kill soldiers in Safara that they've taken away the fear. Mm -hmm. Now, that's what is happening in the Southeast now. 
this killing means that this boy is no longer fear death. Yeah. And once you remove that fear, in at them. then they we are in the serious trouble. Hmm. And then we don't seem to have somebody in government who can articulate government position on all this. We seem to have been in a limbo and everybody is now fighting for himself. Southeast is strategic for three reasons. It's a very compact region. And it's heavily populated. It's all, in fact, I know that well, I think it's an umbrella emo that's per, capi, per, per kilometer. It's the most popular, populated per kilometer in the country. That means a particular kilometer will have more people than anywhere else in Nigeria. You cannot afford to allow such a place to burn. Some places will burn and you have casualty of 200, 300. A kilometer burns in the southeast, you are talking about 3,000, 4,000 people. That's the danger we are facing. Do you think this struggle is different? The banditry happening in the north. Mm. You know, different in the sense that these ones, they want to wreak havoc on their fellow uh, citizens. They are fighting the state. Co collect uh, uh, ransom and everything. But the ones, the one in the east, you will see gunmen. They will be roaming around the street. And people are passing. People are passing. They are not hurting people on the streets. But they have their targets. You, you you named it. Is it uh, the kind of struggle that day? I forgot the name you gave to it. It's the kind of agitation. It's a resistance. Mm -hmm. it's, it's resistance. Um, a kind of organized resistance. It used to, to be peaceful before. To constituted authority. Mm. But this is armed struggle against the state. Mm. Yeah. Armed struggle. You know that was how uh, ANC. That was what ANC was doing in um, in South Africa at that time. You know, just arms struggle, take up arms against the state. And, because um, it used to be peaceful before resist, now. Resist, peaceful agitation, now it has... Resist the institutions of state, hmm. um, cripple the state, hmm. reduce the capacity of the state to, 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 to organize to things and um, hmm. achieve peace. Because so that's the difference. Once there is anarchy and nobody seems to be in charge, it makes the terrorists happy because they will now be able to um, load it over order. people in the area. They don't want a semblance of um, order. Um, order or civil uh, authority in in those areas. That that's that's what we are seeing. Every day we hear on the port, so this person has been killed. This INEC office has been burned. This and that. There ought to Specific be a solution. Targets. We can't just sit here and imagine that. This thing should continue. And that it there took, won't be a solution. And it took time for it to fester. It was not overnight. It took a long time. We, we, we're not paying attention to it. When Autumn, the governor, complained that criminal headsmen were harassing his people, instead of us to respond promptly, put an end to it, we didn't. Today, today, that problem is spreading to nearly every part of Nigeria. It's, not, it's no longer been a problem alone. In, in, in Taraba, they are still killing people. It's gone to south, the southwest. It's, it's gone to Ebony. It's gone to, uh, there is even a report uh, uh, about Ebony and the, uh, the, the, the local government. Yes, the border with, with uh, Benue. So when somebody complained, he wrote a letter. You refuse to act. You are ridiculing and making politics out of it. Calling him names. It's not in your party again. Yes. Calling him names. Today, hmm. we are talking about the uh, header farmer crisis. It's leading to hunger in our country. It's led to spiraling inflation and all that. Because we did not nip it in the board at that time. We allowed it to fester. Hmm. We, made, we, we did politics with it. Now, it is a problem that has spread to other north central states and even down south yesterday a, 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 yesterday a caller yeah. on the program ima from oweri painted a green picture of the situation in the states now let's share that with you i have ima from oweri good afternoon my brothers good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon Oh, bless you, Baba Jibe and Co. Honestly, I'm a first time caller. No. Oh, uh, welcome. I, welcome. I, I started following you guys on Facebook after watching you here. 
Thank you for your submission. Thank you. As just yesterday on our mm. show, mm. Ima called in from Oguri. And um, earlier, the visuals you saw earlier, the visual of the situation across the southeast that my producers was just trying to show mm. everything grounded to an alt. And empty streets. Empty streets. Empty streets. I just wish my producer can just flash it. Yes. Mm. Empty streets. This is the situation we found ourselves. No, you have to hear. The stay at an order. Yes, in fact, some were saying that they are that they stayed indoors because even soldiers could uh, molest them yeah. and accuse them of being IPOP members. Okay. Yeah, there's some youths. So, so that's why they decided to stay there. They have to stay at home uh -huh. and uh, even shops and within within streets, strong mm. Those are strong um, sea roads. No, nobody. <laughs> see, nobody wants to die. If uh, those militants come to to attack you, who will save you? Nobody. Well, that is who, who is saving the have policeman? You seen, have the you seen security uh, operatives on the road? I'm telling you. Yeah, it's so, another thing. When they are patrolling, yes. we have confidence. Yeah, people have confidence. Routes. So if, uh, if, 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 you can't see, an now. Uh, if you can't see people mm. on the street, this then is, you that too will want to stay at That enters them. Okay. okay. Mm. Uh, uh, it is well. Enugu, Anambra, just all across. <laughs> it is not well. well. And finally, today, all politics they say are local. So the stakes were high when the Lagos State chapter of the All Progressive Congress (APC) staged primaries to choose its candidates for the coming local government election in the states. While the exercise witnessed a massive turnout of voters in most local governments and council development areas violence and diversion of electoral materials marred the exercise in other places. There is anxiety in town as members eagerly await the outcome. Um, the Publicity Secretary, Shaya Olora Dejo, sent a press statement yesterday congratulating um, their party members that they, um, for the conduct of that election. And in that press statement, he actually said um, 33 33 L, um, um, local governments and LCDAs actually were certified and cleared to have held um, that uh, Saturday election, and the rest, the party will come out with a position 
that you know we have um, 20 local government and then 37, 37 council development areas. Gideon, on Thursday, we said this on Thursday that look, the model, the way the party was going, if care is not taken, this it might it degenerate. Yeah. It went well in some areas. The story in some areas was consensus and they celebrated the way they came out with their consensus. But other areas, election did not take place at all. Yes, and the what I've seen, which I expect the APC leaders to address, because this is shameful, is the fact that people who knew in their hearts that they could not win these primaries contrived violence in different areas just to make sure that primaries did not take place. In fact, some will come to um, the, the one of the wards, some will come to a ward where election will take place, and the first thing they will say is, "No, we are not going to have, we are not going to have an election." Talks were moving around and ensuring that the process was disrupted in places like Kojodu, Shomolu, Apapa, Surulere, and and so many places. Our Yes, and you also uh, we also found a situation in which we also had a situation in which inadequate ballot materials. Mm. We are about four thousand people who are waiting to vote. You take five hundred ballot materials to the place. I mean, how do you how how does plan for logistics? Right? How do how do you uh, do that? Who we agree to not vote? How do you ration? 500 ballot materials for in a place where about 4,000 people have, uh, uh, have gathered it's just it's to, vote. to vote. And don't forget, they just finished their membership validation so, exercise. So what these guys are doing is ensure that election does not take place so that because they bank on powerful people within the party who will simply impose candidates on on um, uh, eligible uh, voters. On, on party, yeah. This is not democracy. If you said there will be primaries, the like people are ready. I'm going to lose an election. And, and, and I know and you're going to win, GD. I am just a means to make sure that. Go and disrupt. Go and disrupt the yes, ensure that, that election will not take place. So that not GD will not emerge. I will not be put to shame. There are different places where you look at in a tire, a cate, they were snatching ballot boxes. <laughs> They even stole the phone of the electoral officer mm -hmm. there. And it's Some that was shooting, shooting and diversion of materials in, uh, in uh, um, Isolo. If I could die two thugs came, disrupted voting. What we need is peace and transparency. We asked for that air before the election. Yes. And we, do, we said we do not want bloodshed, mm. although bloodshed eventually happened. Mm. Even before the election, there was uh, bloodshed over mere pasting of posters. They killed uh, people. So I don't think it makes sense for us to have a situation in which an individual knows that he has powerful people in government who ensure that since election didn't take place, they will just simply go and write his name. Even APC in 2019 mm. lost 2019 election, lost some states because of this uh, uh, kind of thing. Where you say uh, an unpopular candidate, you impose on the people, and at the end of the day, people defected, they left the party, voted against you. Mm. When it was happening in, Ana in Adama, for example, we won't. Mm. They said no, no, that uh, no, uh, Bindo will win. Did mm. Bindo win? Mm -hmm. I've been warning since this January 2016 <laughs> that Bindo may not be reelected unless certain things were done. <laughs> it's unfortunate you now. Like a prophet that time. You know, it's I was, unfortunate was, now. You say, what's your own with Bindo? Say, if, ah, like two years to the election. <laughs> you kept saying it, you kept saying it, but when it when happened, I went happened, to the I, place, said, ah, I saw what was happening there. Bindo. I traveled there now. And in the end, <laughs> You know, when it happened in uh, Bauchi too, I even predicted that APC would lose Bauchi 
uh, a few days before the election. And that's what happened. There are things that should not be happening. It's shameful that many people who have fought for the party, mm. who work for the party, when some people are ashamed to be identified so with the so party, mm. they have demonstrated loyalty. Mm. Now some unpopular fellows, some of them get crashed into the party. They are now the ones Doing who the refuse problem. to allow election to take place because they think that they have Babang Bejo somewhere mm -hmm. who will go to the uh, local government, uh, I mean to the party secretariat to simply put their names there as the winner of an election that didn't take place. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it is wrong. GKB, on Saturday, I came out on Saturday. I, I just, it was like, it was like, a normal election day, as if mm. INEC is conducting an yeah. election. It wasn't APC, like an intra party APC thing. It wasn't like a problem. Do you understand? Mm. So, the interpretation I give to it is that if you clinch these tickets, you are home and dry. It's, you are like 90% home. You just wait for what LASEC is going to do in July, and you know, we know the, what happens in every other state. So, the bottom line that is keenly contested because the stakes and everything are high, but it turned up. They just finished their membership validation exercise. Yeah, a of so a ago. lot of people actually yeah. came Come out. To, uh, they wanted to the be part of, part of that process. Yeah. I, will, I will take the route that Gide took earlier yeah. because I'm also an interested party. Because there are some local government that I have vested interest. In one of them, the, like Gide said, somebody who is very loyal to the party. Yeah. Whereas we have to step down twice. Hmm. For others, hmm. and everybody thought this was his time. They have to bring somebody who was in PDP for almost 15 years, hmm. only joining the party as they said, as three years ago, to give him the tickets. And it's not every toggery that is physical. Hmm. They not only they now force the guy to sign a release that he has agreed to step down hmm. against his wish. You know that they don't only that they even ask the commissioner in the states to counter sign. To make sure that the guy will not deny later. Hmm. So there are two, three different levels of talking. It's all because they know the guy will win in the last time, in the on the on the, on the mm -hmm. last time yes. to contest. To make sure they not contest and to make sure there are no protest votes, they force them to sign, and they force the commissioner representing the local governments in these cabinets to counter sign. So there will be three levels simply because. Uh, a person handling uh, motor parks in that area decided to go, he wanted to be a godfather. And therefore, whoever has in that local government, we must be the godfather. And whoever doesn't come, in must go. This will destroy the party in the long run. Ultimately, yeah. Because what people are doing now in certain areas, and I'm talking about very, very densely populated areas of Lagos, center of Lagos, that what will happen now is that people are just waiting. And uh, what will happen, like I told somebody on radio, is this. Just like it happened to Sunday Bo, it happened to Nam De Kano. Somebody will rise up within the party ranks and aggregate the feelings of these people. And they will become a major factor going down the line. Don't forget the Mushima. Yeah, uh, the Kakware. Mm -hmm. And fought the party and won and won and won and won. But the party have to recognize that this is the man that holds this area. Mm -hmm. This is what got to put up. People will move away either uh, silently or what I call malicious obedience. They will obey the party. No, they still have a, they still have the opportunity. But what is it? Right now, they are up to Friday. And they are up to Friday. Block Friday. Block Akma is blocked already. Like okay, protesters. protest, Abi. Yes, I, I, I think uh, the independent, Lagos Independent National Electoral Commission, LASEC, said mm. um, July, June 4th. Oh, the 4th of June. June, uh, that's uh, uh, Friday. Mm. That's Friday. Uh, today is uh, 30th. Abi, 31st. Uh, 31st. Uh, 31st. Uh, no, there is time to still address they, all this. They used thing. to do it. The only thing is, I'm not what sure. What they used to do so before That's now, did they? Was that um, there will be a kind of consensus before you get to this field? Consensus. Uh, see, we are Democrats. The best way is still for people to go and test their popularity. Yeah, that's the popularity. Mm -hmm. Consensus is an option. It's an option. But the thing about consens uh, con consensus is that all the contending groups must agree. You must make sure that if you don't have, have somebody that is in... 14 tendencies hmm. and just one yeah. and just one opposes the idea of consensus. That's the the best, of there's consensus no consensus. consensus would have been defeated. The best way is still for people to test their problem. That is democracy. Hmm. 
That is democracy. In advanced democracies, how many times do people uh, do consensus? Let if, if you are a politician, you think you are popular, Go on, and you it. are just not somebody throwing his weight around negatively. Test your popularity. Let us see what how popular you are. You, are. Yeah. you cannot just go and bring talks, and then with police also looking away, disrupt uh, 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 voting, and then even after you were handed over, a talk was handed over here. You know, Jodu handed over to the police. After a few minutes, they released him. You know, he was back on the beach. He was back. So what sort of nonsense is that? Is that how to do elections? And we said, look, do this thing. I was excited that, yes, the way this thing was going, we are going to have elections. Popular candidates. Real democracy. Yeah. Mm. The popular mm -hmm. candidates mm -hmm. will emerge. Who came out. But some incumbent chairmen and some individuals who know in their hearts that they can't even win an election in their ward. In their home. In their, inside their home. Their wives will vote against them. Such people <laughs> decided that, oh, they must use people uh, who are big. The people who are big, who are now uh, uh, being used to say, okay, this person is not the candidate. I have to bring, uh, this one must come in. My brother must, uh, must be local government chairman. This is my opportunity to put this one here. Uh, my history, son. history, uh, or my son. My history cousin. is always harsh on such people because yeah. it will come up one day that you 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 combusted the legitimate aspirations of the people in favor of somebody close to you. Yeah, people, yeah, put, this, the story will be told. I'm looking at them. There are people, some people that I don't want yeah. to mention their names now. I don't want to. Yes. You know. Some they of know, them in government. Know. I don't want to mention the animal. We can see the roles that they are playing. Mm. Something that came that people are excited about. You have now devised a way to simply and the leader of the party, the, and the party leader warned that nobody should drop his name and, and dropped, walked away. He dropped and it people. like mad. And he traveled like mm. while he was away. These things, uh, these things happen. The people that I'm talking about, they know themselves. They who have made up their mind to simply bring names of unpopular people write those names take to acme they know themselves but they've got to change for the better because even people that i used to respect mm. they've lost they've lost that oh, respect like because respect. i never imagined that some of them who stoop, who, so who stoop so low as to say oh this is don't worry this is my candidate well, well if you cannot accept to be vice then go let the people contest. That person that you have brought, queue behind them. Let us see whether both of you will not be disgraced. Why are you rigging? Why are you rigging election? Queue behind your candidate. If you know you are big, you are big in government, queue behind that your candidate. Let us see whether the people will not vote against that candidate. They just don't want the election to hold. Mm. They want popular candidates to emerge. So and they by, forgot the APC won by a very slight margin in 2019. This time next Monday, we, uh, we, we are going to get at least the list of the yeah, people who will be submitting mm. to the state's uh, electoral Let commission. Let APC set a, a good example. And let's see how they are going to resolve this crisis. This is what we Let's see how they are going to resolve the crisis. Yeah. So it's unfortunate. Thank you. Yeah. Thank always, you. Always, always a pleasure to be here. It's a new week. Yeah. BKO. Yeah. Thank you for always being here with us. Mm. Um, and that's our offering today. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. We're on YouTube, youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. I'm Ayodili Uzuba. Bye for now and God bless Nigeria. <laughs>